start with Ethan, since you're on that side. If you can briefly introduce yourself and the work that you're doing related to community impact and activism. Yes, ma'am. Um, hi, it's nice to meet you. My name is Ethan Asher. Uh, it's nice to e-meet you, I should say. I uh, use he, him pronouns. Uh, I am a high school senior this year, um, so I'm young, but I work for a company called Future Coalition. Um, and what the coalition does is facilitate communication uh, and generally back and support for youth organizers all over the country. Uh, and specifically, and I think why I'm here a large part of today, uh, is that we help oversee the U.S. Climate Strike Coalition. Uh, so we help plan the climate strikes. And today was the launch of our Earth Day Live virtual climate strike as well. Um, I hope that was an, an in-depth enough intro to me. That's good. Thank you, Ethan. And um, Julia, if you want to introduce yourself again, I know you yes. introduced yourself on the other panel. No, yes, thank you. So my okay. name is Julia Zeitlin, and I am the hub coordinator of the Sunrise Movement Palo Alto Hub. So I'm 13 years old, um, and I've been involved in the climate movement for over a year now. Um, for those of you who don't know the Sunrise Movement, it's a youth-led organization fighting for climate justice and the Green New Deal. And so we have 300 hubs all across the country, and the Palo Alto Hub is one of them. And we participate in strikes, protests, actions, and collaborative events with other organizations that align with our message, as well as our leaders in government. Thank you, Julia. That's great to see young people really involved with all this. Um, so have you guys uh, heard of, uh, I think Jane Fonda is having some um, online fire site. Um, I forget what it's called, actually, off the top of my head. But um, you've, and I know she's a you know celebrity and she's been really involved and she's been trying to get more young people um, to also get involved. Have you guys uh, looked at her? Uh, call to action website, or um, I think she has a Facebook page as well. Yes, ma'am. She um, so she founded an organization a little while ago called Fire Drill Fri Fire Drill Fridays, um, where she yes. intentionally was arrested uh, along with several other celebrities in front of the Capitol building and other landmarks to bring awareness to the climate crisis. Um, and she actually she's on Earth Day Live these three days. She's one of our celebrity appearances. So she um, has been doing Earth Day virtual events uh, alongside lots of other celebrities um, and climate leaders. Great. How is the organization that you're working with um, ta tackling these problems and what kind of, uh, besides, I guess, with activism, what specifically are you trying to achieve, um, Ethan? Uh, yes, ma'am. So uh, Future Coalition, I, like I said before, we generally work with other youth organizers and to connect them. So when we talk about what we do in the climate crisis and how our activism is kind of structured, um, almost everything is centered around how do we facilitate communication. There are a number of large uh, youth-led climate organizations. Sunrise is one of them. Uh, Zero Hour, U.S. Youth Climate Strike. Uh, there's an um, International Indigenous Youth Council. Uh, there's a handful of others. And so generally, we focus on providing resources and support for them uh, and making sure that when we do actions and launch campaigns, we are coordinated um, and working together uh, in kind of the best way possible. And um, Julia, what specific, is there anything specific that you would like to um, call out in what uh, you guys do? Definitely. So. As I said earlier, we participate in strikes, protests, and other actions. We also work with, we also collaborate with other organizations and our, our leaders in government. And so I'd say one of the major issues that Sunrise uh, as a whole, as well as Sunrise Palo Alto focuses on is um, the a just transition from fossil fuel based industries to clean energy. And so social and racial justice is a really big part of the Green New Deal, which is the foundation of Sunrise's platform. And we really focus on how we can protect the frontline communities who are going to be and are m most adversely affected uh, by the climate crisis. And so I'd say the, the Green New Deal is really 
uh, the main uh, package of legislation and the main sort of demand and that we are as an organization are fighting for. So Julia, on that note, so do, have you been able to get to, um, I know it, um, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, um, she's really pushing the Green New Deal and she's the one that created it. Um, but have you been able to get to, I don't know, get to the White House, I guess, to try to um, talk about this? Um, no, not yet. Our hub personally has not. We are Right now, we are just starting out um, with local legislators that we're interacting with. Uh, just last month, we provided feedback with, to the Palo Alto City Council on their sustainability and climate action plan. And so we, we're, we're starting out on, on a more local level, um, also thinking more about uh, the statewide, how we can get involved with the California Green New Deal, um, which was also proposed by one of Palo Alto's local um, legislators. Mark Berman. And so we're, we're starting out uh, on a local as opposed to federal level as a hub right now. Okay, that's great. How about you, Ethan? Have you, um, besides local, have you, or are there plans to go to Washington? Well, that, it's a good question. Um, and there are, I'd like to say, uh, we directly don't often launch campaigns that are legislative. Um, but several of the groups that we work with, including Zero Hour, which is a youth-led um, climate team, works very closely with 350.org and the Sierra Club, um, and has been working on lobbying federal legislation. Uh, we also work very closely with the National Children's Campaign, which has been working on launching a campaign designed to kind of empower young people to write and pass legislation. Um, and so I think there are plans, and I, I hope there are plans to go not only to the House, but to the Senate and to the White House. Um, I am not directly involved in those efforts, so I can't speak directly to that, but I would hope so, and, and I would definitely be on the lookout for it in the future. Okay, um, so what are you personally doing to um, reduce, recycle, or uh, reuse uh, in your personal life, Ethan? Um, in my personal life, I think it is the little things. Obviously, recently, we haven't been driving anywhere, so making an effort to bike or walk whenever possible, even though that isn't always possible for people. Um, at the end of the last panel about kind of urban uh, sustainability. Um, also, just things being conscious of, like, if you're making coffee in the morning and you're using a Keurig cup every morning, maybe maybe invest in a different way to do that or, or invest in cleaner fuel. Um, but I would also like to say there definitely is a narrative that gets pushed a lot that we are responsible for what's happening to the climate and it's our personal choices that's doing that. And, you know, we can point to that a vast majority of, of carbon emissions come from fewer than 100 companies. I um, mean, we can identify those 100 companies. So to kind of, you know, put the put the, the onus on the individual, well, of course, we should be doing everything we can do um, to, to make the world a cleaner and better place. Um, you know, in order to achieve the kind of change we're looking at, it is really necessary to have either legislation or, or wide scale um, change. In Great. How about Ju Julia? Yes, definitely. I agree that uh, making small sustainable changes in your life, for example, uh, I'm vegan, my, my whole family were vegan, um, are, are, are important, but at this point, necessarily, they are not the, the solution and won't be able to, to, to solve this crisis. Um, and so something on a more, on, on that level that, that I've been doing, um, that, that's a little bit more broader, getting other people, uh, getting other people also involved um, is at my school, um, engaging the, the green team um, and other students in personal actions that you can take and just bringing up the conversation more so people are much more focused on it and um, getting the youth uh, more, more engaged is definitely um, an, an important aspect. And also once people have have this on their minds, uh, they'll be more likely to make everyday actions and choices, um, small and large, that um, keep this this in mind. Thanks, Julia. Um, so finally, I guess, what, um, 
what kind of call to action would you like to um, have young people do, it, especially trying to convince the ones that are not um, so focused on, on the climate, but, you know, they're still, because I, I see my, my kids' uh, school that there's kids that just, there are kids that just throw stuff, their trash on the, on the ground, and they don't pick up after themselves. Um, uh, so things like that. What would you tell your fellow students who are not actually actively involved? Ethan? Um, I mean, I think definitely the, the apathetic nature um, of, of young people is a problem. And I think we've started to see that change even in the last few weeks with the uh, coronavirus crisis that's happening. Um, but I think also, you know, it, it's about voting. It's it's all about electoral and electoral math because, like we said before, it needs to be legislative change. And you know, the best analogy I've seen is, you know, it's great to healthcare and all of that's important, but who cares about fixing the dishwasher when your house is on fire? You know, like this is the issue. This is what we have to protect. Um, and it's an issue now. It's not an issue for the future. And so the best way that we can kind of combat that that apathy and voter apathy, specifically around young people, um, is by by putting it in their face. Here are the people that have already been impacted by this crisis. Here are the refugees that have been pushed out of Bangladesh and pushed out of islands in the Caribbean because of intense flooding. Um, here are we had three 500 year storms in a two year period. Um, you know, here's what's happening, and here's what you can do to fix it. And and quickly. Um, we can push people just enough. Thanks, Ethan. And Julia? Um, yes, definitely. I think it's really important to have a mindset of this This is our responsibility, uh, whether we like it or not, to, to, con to continue this fight and protect our environment uh, for future generations. And... I definitely think something that's that Sunrise has been doing is spreading this message, not just to adults, but then also to younger people and getting people excited about joining a movement and realizing that together we can make a difference because on a single level, just as an individual, it's a little bit discouraging to see these, these crises that we are facing. I personally, I... I mean, I feel like this is my responsibility to be doing what I'm doing. I, I'm sure a lot of other people would be preferring not having to think about this or deal with this. Um, but showing people that together with a group of committed leaders that you can make change is, is helpful for easing people's anxieties and helping people realize that this is not our, our last hope and I can still act. Thank you, Julia. And um, I guess I wanted to end with how do you, um, I guess, kind of following up on your uh, idea, Julia, earlier, what's a, I guess, a movie that you would recommend um, for people to watch about climate change? Uh, Ethan? Can I give you a book? <laughs> yeah, sure, a book, too. <laughs> okay, I'm so sorry, I have, I have not recently seen any movies about climate change. Um, I do want to say, um, I don't know if y'all are familiar with Bill McKibben, um, works, for, I believe, 350 and a number of other climate organizations, but he um, wrote a book called, and I'm so sorry, I am actually going to look this up right now. Um, I hope you'll excuse me. Um, he wrote a book called The End of Nature, um, and it is pretty dated, and so I think it's important to kind of see the perspective from, you know, 20 years ago versus what it looks like now. And, you know, I think it's an interesting read. Thank you. I'll probably read that. <laughs> and uh, Julia, how about do you have a book or a movie? Yes, I actually, once you mentioned that I had, what first came to mind was also Bill McKibben. He's an amazing writer and activist. His uh, newer book, uh, Falter, um, is really interesting. I'm, I'm currently reading it. Um, he, he's, he's a really inspirational person, and he's... He created 350.org. I highly recommend you read the book. Great. Um, any other uh, web? You know, do you want to plug your website again or to, to for everybody, Ethan? 
I would love to. Um, I can direct you all two places. Uh, the first to learn more about Future Coalition and the work we're doing, futurecoalition.org. Um, and the second is going to be, I've mentioned a few times, we are launching a mass mobilization called Earth Day Live. It started this morning at 9 a.m. Um, I'm very happy to announce we had over 150,000 people join the first day of the live stream today. Um, and coming up, I, Friday, we have Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez joining us. Cindy Abrams will be joining us. Um, Rachel Ray, uh, as well as a number of musical artists, uh, the founders of Black Lives Matter, um, and so, so many more people. So we would love to have you all there. You can go to earthdaylive2020.org or just Google Earth Day Live and it will come up. Yeah. Great. <laughs> uh, Julia, do you have any other websites? Uh, yes, I do. So you can find uh, the Sunrise, uh, Sunrise Movement website, sunrisemovement.org um, to learn more about a hub that's, that's closest to your area or how to reach out to us. Palo Alto Hub. And so currently we've been working on a digital media campaign with um, uh, build, with a countdown to Earth Day, with, which was building up to an event earlier this morning, the Green, a Green New Deal teach-in that we, that we hosted. Um, and so if you'd like to check that out or, and more of the posts that we have been creating, um, you can go to Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at Sunrise Palo Alto. Um, and we also have an, an Earth Day schedule uh, with more events from, the, from Earth Day Live, um, including a Peninsula Peace and Justice Center. They're having a climate, virtual climate strike and rally um, on Zoom. And on, um, you can find out more information on our social media to see what we have for the next three days to follow up with this action. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Julia, and thank you, Ethan. And this concludes uh, this panel. <laughs> thank you. You can, uh, yeah, if anyone wants to uh, talk to Ethan or Julia, you can uh, yeah, thank you. breakout sessions yeah, off the stage. Thank you.